What's up, everybody? Uh, I'll give everybody a second to tune in, um, and then we'll get started. What's up, Terry? What's up, Brayden? Welcome. Thank you, thank you. What's up, Sean? What's up, Edward? Central Florida. What's up, Andy? All right, we got some people flowing in. So let's get it going. All right, so today I thought I'd tie a, a couple of basic bait fish patterns that I've used um, uh, for a very long time for a vast majority of species. Um, today I'm gonna show you a baby bluegill pattern that I use. Uh, great for bass, pike, um, anything predatory of that nature, warm water species. And then um, I'm also gonna switch it up and then after we do a bluegill, I'm gonna do a, a rainbow bait fish. So it's gonna be for predatory browns, predatory rainbows, big mackinaws, uh, something of that nature. So let's get it going. So here's a little example of the bluegill. Did a little warm up earlier and so that's what we'll start with, it's a little bluegill. Pretty cool little pattern. All right. So for the hook, we're gonna use a uh, A-Rex TP610. It's a trout predator. Uh, this size is a one-aught. Um, if you're gonna be tying a bait fish, you're probably going after a larger predatory fish. So one-aught and up, depending on how big you really wanna go. I've seen bass attack a eight-inch bluegill, you know. Okay, so you have your hook in. We've got our uh, trout predator hook. We're gonna start our thread. I'm just using some 150 denier GSP. You can use whatever, as long as it's strong. All my streamers, I use white thread. I don't really care about the colors. I figure whatever I want the head thread wrap to be, I just hit with a marker. So we're gonna start our thread wrap. And on the way back, when we tie in our tail, we're gonna tie it in right at about where the barb is. So for the bluegill patterns, I always use Magnum Rabbit. Um, so you can go a, a couple different shades of blue for bluegill. Just depends on what you're finding in your area, the colors of the fish that you're finding in your local pond, streams, whatever. So I usually go with like a dark olive variant, um, or you can get different colors of, you know, the tiger bard variant. I like those for bluegill a lot. So we're gonna take, uh, for this one, I say we're just gonna go with like a darker olive. Let's go with like a dark, dark olive variant. So all we're gonna do is cut in our tail, cut on our little point, start. And then measure it out. I kind of like to do the tail maybe like two to two and a half times the length not too much beyond two. It's kind of like my sweet spot. Usually it's like right up against the base here. So once I find that and I just come in with my bodkin and I split it, get a nice separation of the rabbit. We're just gonna tie that in the back there. Okay, like it. And then we're just gonna tie that in. Semi-loose wrap for the first one, then I come in, pull it kind of tight. If you're using GSP, don't be scared to wrench down on it. You can cut the rabbit with GSP, but you have to really wrench on it. I come around the back side of it a couple times just to secure it up a little bit, personal preference. And then it's gonna pull our remaining strip back. So we have our tail tied in and we're gonna pull the rest back. Our thread wrap is right there where our 
rabbit ends or starts. So then I'm gonna come in with some 0.35 lead wire. This is personal preference as well, but I like my bait fish weighted. Help me get down in the feeding zone, wherever they're hanging out. So I'm just gonna wrap that until, you know, you leave a little bit for building your head. I'm just gonna leave about that much. And then remember, you have to tie your rabbit in front of the lead as well. that down all right so we have our rabbit tied in it's pulled back now we're going to come in here this is from a fly shop called snake river fly it's called hydro, hydro hackle i believe this is like circus clown or sinister circus or something like that but anyway it's a little dark kaleidoscope of all different colors and i just really like this for the bluegill patterns because i feel like with the broad range of bluegills and the way they you know, change colors and the vast majority of the, or the vast differences in the, in the colors and shapes that you see them, this kind of gives you a little bit of everything of what you would see. So then I just tie that in right on the end there. So once I tie that in, then I'm just going to work over my lead wraps a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is all going to be covered. You know, you just want to make sure your lead's nice and secure. Yeah, so make sure you guys share this video, um, share it on your page. For every 50 shares, Norvice is going to give away a, a free net gator. So share it with your friends, have your friends share it, and then every 50 shares, they'll give one away. All right, so now that I have my lead covered up, I'm going to take my hydro hackle and using my fingers to kind of ply it back and just teach it into the back of this. Okay, what's up, V? All right, using my fingers to the back of this, I'm just gonna train it back, and then I'm just gonna wrap it forward, covering that lid as I go. You guys are lucky, this is way more organized than I usually tie, I have it all like set up. Usually it's straight chaos. You don't even wanna know what my setup looks like. So once we get that all palmered towards the front, I'm gonna come in and clip it. Now we have all our hydro hackle, it's wrapped around our body, around our lead. Now we're gonna come in with our rabbit and we're just gonna go over the top of this thing. Pull it kind of tight, train it back with your fingers. So what you should get is a nice colorful little belly start to form. And just go right over the top of that rabbit. Don't even worry about splitting the rabbit fur in the front. Just tie it right over. All right, a couple of wraps in the front. Here we go. Secure that down. And there we go. Okay, so I have my rabbit tied over the top. Belly starting to take shape. Now we're ready to start the head. Okay, so for a few years now for the heads, all I've used is one material and that's Magnum Dub. It's uh, made uh, by a guy named Aaron Laterra. I hope I'm not butchering his last name, but a uh, real cool guy, makes this stuff by himself here in America. And uh, it's about twice to triple the length of laser dub. So it's a really good material to use for heads, big pike flies, predatory flies, streamers. Um, it's real long, he can add flash. The dude can do any custom color you want. I mean, I have him do bloody throat, which we're gonna use. Um, just, just a great product overall, and I'll show you why as we go along. So for this fly, I would probably use uh, a six weight, seven weight, eight weight, depends on what you're chasing. Um, all these that you 
see tied or this size, you can easily chuck with a six weight. You could probably do it with a five weight, but I'd, the six would probably be better in case you run into some wind or you want that extra distance. Uh, typically for bass, I'll fish a seven. I like to fish a seven more than I fish an eight just for the fun of it, a little bit uh, more fun on the fight. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the head. Uh, so like I said, we're using Magnum Dub, okay? So for the bluegill, usually we have like an olive to dark olive body. And then for the top of the head, I like to try to mix it up between like a dark olive and a brown or a darker color. Depends on what you see in your stream, you know what I mean? You have to make that judgment for yourself and kind of just mix the colors. So I have a bunch of colors here. These are the main colors that I'll be using for this fly here and I'll show you, right? Of all Magnum Dub. It's just a nice streamer material, similar to Laser Dub. About three times the length you can get it for cheap by the bag uh, great dude sells it commercially I get it by the gallon so we're gonna try to do the head in two stacks two stacks top and bottom so I'm gonna take my magnum dub and if you don't have magnum dub you can use laser dub you're just not gonna get the length of the uh, profile that you want. Me too, James, me too. So for the Magnum Dub, what I'm doing is to tease the materials, I just kind of take them in between my fingers like this. And as I'm pulling them, I'm straightening them out and I'm aligning them with each other, right? And what that's doing is that's gonna reduce the amount of waste that I have when I go to brush my fly out. The more fibers I can trap with my threads, the less I'm gonna lose as I brush it out. So I make this little blend. This was like a dirty brown and a dirty olive, and I just kind of blended my own little color mixture together to a shade that I liked. And now I'm gonna split this into two, two stacks. Now when you're doing the head, proportionately, you want the head stack to be a little bit bulkier than the bottom, right? And that's for the hydrodynamics of it. When the bait fish is swimming in the water, your fly, you want it to swim straight up and down. A little bit of flop side to side is okay, but if your fly is barrel rolling and spinning, then you know, then you know your proportions are way off. So I'm just gonna come in with a loose wrap, secure that down. Come on, we'll stay together. My top stack of my brown and olive, okay? I'm gonna come in the bottom here. In the bottom. And I'm going to tie in, this is some tan, just like a dirty tan. You could use white for the bottom belly stack. I'm going to do the same thing I did on the top, except this time I'm just going to tie just a little bit less material on the bottom than I do the top. Secure that down, flip it around. Now I have my top stack and my bottom stack. And if you need to work them and even them out a little bit with your fingers, you can. Once I get to that point, I'm gonna chase my thread up through the separation of it, push it back a little bit, and bam. So there's my first stack. Now the second stack, you're gonna do a little bit more. You're gonna go same color, do the front, Come in with your stack on the top. I'm gonna tie it on the top. Now on the bottom stack, we're gonna go with a little bit different color. A lot of times I see these bluegills with their bright throats or, you know, bright bellies. And it gives the fly a little bit of color. So I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of hot orange mixed with uh, it's like bloody throat color, some blood colored. But mix those together so I get a little bit of bloodiness with some hot orange in it. I'm gonna tie that right in the front there. So that'll be my throat for this fly. Two wraps right there. So now we have our throat tied in the bottom. We have our second head stack on the top and now we're just gonna turn our fly to the side. And we're gonna come in 
This is all the same material. This is all Magnum dub, just different colors. You can get like different bags of them like that. Just get a whole assortment of them and go crazy on the different bait fish you can make. That's what I do. So take a little bit of blue, just a little bit, right? Because we're working those bluish cheek plates that you see. And as you're tying these little bluish cheek plates, I just take a little bit just for some accent color. It's a tiny little piece like that. And I'm going to tie it in between my two head stacks on the side. Right, just like that. See that? So I'm going to tie it in between my two head stacks on that side. So that's one cheek. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to do the other cheek. There's a little too much blue in there. All right, here we go. I'm in loose wrap. Make sure it stays where I need it to stay. All right. So now I've got my throat tied in. I've got my top head stack, right, my olive, and I've got the blue tied in on the side. I'm gonna do the same thing I did for my first stack. I'm gonna come in in between the separation of the dubbing, try to keep it in the position that you, uh, that you tied it in, and I'm just gonna come in here, and I'm gonna wrap up the front, okay? So now we have our dubbing all tied in. We've secured the front. I'm just going to come in here and whip finish it real quick. All right. Now we're at this point. So now we're going to come in with uh, a brush, right? This is what I use for all my streamer flies. I use a steel brush, a little wooden handle. You can get it at Home Depot, two bucks, but they're great. Um, I see a lot of people tie flies with laser dub, magnum dub, whatever. They just put it on there. They don't brush it back. They just shape it back and then they trim it with scissors. I've seen that method used before. For whatever reason, I've gotten into this method and it stuck with me and I like it. I actually take a steel brush and what I do is I'll come in here and I'll get in those fibers and I'll really brush them out. So remember earlier in the video when we talked about the uh, when I was pulling the fibers apart and I was telling you like, hey, this will reduce the amount of fibers that I, that I lose when I brush the fly out, right? So all those fibers were tied in there pretty good. This is a steel brush. I barely lost anything, just a couple little guys. So now that you've made the shape, right? I, I like to brush mine out and get that nice bait fish shape that you like, okay? And now we're gonna come in for our eyes. One thing I really like about this vise, I really love it, is the four locking points. You can lock it side, this way, that way. So if you're a person who ties a lot of streamers and you put on a lot of eyes you flip it to the side now my vice is locked in the 90 degree position and i know that when i place my eye on there it's perfect and i just flip it around on the other side and i do the same thing that's one thing i haven't seen on any other vice and uh it saves me a, a ton of time all right, let's see here all right so now we're going to come in we've got our our bait fish body brushed out to the general shape that we want it. I'm going to come in here with some living eyes. This is an earth color, eight millimeter. And I'm going to turn it to the side. I'm just going to come in here just as a normal Gorilla Glue, super glue. I like Gorilla Glue. Uh, the um, Loctite stuff's not bad too. But just a little drop, a dab will do you. Right there, put that right there. Yeah. And then the pointy going forward at least. Dab it right on there. So when I put it on there, I kind of nudge it right up against the uh, hook eye, right up to where the hook eye begins. And then I do a quick flip. Same thing. Now I come in from the straight and I'll come and look from the side of the vise at the alignment 
to the hook to make sure my eyes are sh perfectly parallel to the hook point so I know it's riding straight and not crooked. So if you're just joining me, my name is Thomas Williams. Um, I've been fly fishing for about 11 years now, uh, tying for about seven or eight. Um, I live here in Reno, Nevada. I just got out of the military about a year ago, and so far I've been just fishing it up out here out west and chasing trout. So, yeah. All right, so now that we've got those nice and secured, pretty much have the bait fish almost almost done. Now, normally I would wait for the, the fly to cure. I'd let this dry maybe five, ten minutes, you know, let the super glue dry a little bit. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and put the UV resin on, okay? It's not gonna hurt. So now you're gonna come in here, you're gonna come in with a little uh, Loon Thin UV uh, fly finish. Um, you can use Gulf, you can use whatever. You can use, even use Thick, but it's definitely easier if you use, use Thin. So I'm just gonna come in here, and I'm gonna pull the, pull the dubbing back just a little bit to kind of clear it from the side of the eyes. I want to get right in between those eyes. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to dab it right in there. And I'm going to kind of let it soak into the fibers a little bit. And what I want it to do is kind of attach itself to both eyes and bridge it in the center. And what that's going to do is it's going to make my eyes secure. It's going to help me take the shape of my head, as you can see. Come in. So now we have that shape, and you can kind of use your finger, right? If you want to shape your magnum dub a little bit, a little bit of resin up high is not going to hurt it, you know, if you want to shape it just a little bit. Come in, hit it with a light. I use a UV, or a, excuse me, a Loon Infinity Light. I think it's the best one I've been able to find. That's what I use anyway. All right. So now that that's done, I'm going to flip it over, do the same thing for the underside, come in, bam, 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 alright, do the same thing, come in with my bodkin and I kind of just shape it a little bit. And then the same thing, you can just kind of come in with your fingers and shape how you want your belly to be. You know, if your bait fish is looking too narrow, widen it up a little bit, because once you UV cure it, it'll kind of stick like that. Thanks, Edward. Bam. So now we have it to this point, and the only thing left to do on the fly is do the little ear mark. You know the little black, uh, little ear flap they have, the little ear lobe or whatever you call it? It's kind of behind their eyeball. So all I do is I come in here with a, a Copic marker, and right behind the eye, I just dab a little circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just come in and dab it until you get a nice little ear. Right, I'm going to come in to the other side. And there you go. That, my friends, is a little bluegill. Caught tons of bass on them. I've had catfish hit them. There you go. So as you can see with just the basic materials that we use, just a rabbit strip, some dubbing, and whatever you want to use as an underbody, you could just dub the, the lead if you wanted. 
and you can make a bait fish. So if you just switch those materials around, just the colors, if you say you use a white rabbit strip with some white uh, magnum dub with a little dirty brown in it, then you can start making natural style bait fish, stuff like that. <clears throat> so you can tie this thing pretty big, I guess. Uh, it all depends on how big you can cast and how big the bluegill are in your stream, uh, to be honest. I've tied it up to, hmm, I think, four aught for like the big, big bluegills that I've tied. So there you go. There's the little bluegill. So now let's move on to uh, a rainbow trout. So same materials, same basic premise. Um, is there any questions on that fly uh, before we move on to do the same thing moving forward? Take some questions, if there is any. Thanks, Michael. All right. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. All right. Thanks, Jim. So I'm going to come in here, same hook, A-Rex Trout Predator, uh, two-aught. No, one-aught, excuse me, one-aught. A-Rex Trout Predator, one-aught. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in with my thread and just right to the bend of the hook. Don't forget to share, uh, share the live video. Um, for every 50 shares, Norvice is gonna give out a free net gator. So share it with your friends, tell your friends to share it and uh, get some free stuff. So I'm gonna come in here right to the bend of the hook. And for the rainbow, I'm gonna, come, I'm gonna use just a light olive, right? A light olive rabbit tail. I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna point the back. I'm gonna point the back. Yes, there you go, American Tide Flies. That's the company that uh, Aaron owns, americantideflies.com. That's where you can get the Magnum Dub. Good looking out. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come in here and measure it about to right there where the tail is just kind of mudged up against the base. That's where I like it. I'm gonna separate it with the bodkin. Right. Pull that forward. Nice loose wrap in between. Around the back a couple times. What are what is your intention using a H R E? I don't know what that is. Wish I could help you. What is it, Aloy? Tell me. Tell me, my friend, what you're talking about. Tying flies. I've been tying flies for about eight years. Um, I've been fly fishing for eleven or twelve years. Has to be. I started fly fishing because I saw a YouTube video of someone fly fishing and I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I bought like this really crappy Reddington crosswater combo. And then I went out to this lake that was at Fort Lewis and I was making these gnarly, terrible casts. And I made this terrible cast with this Adams, parachute Adams 14 out on this lake. And this little trout, maybe like eight inches, just grabbed this fly and cleared the water and jumped. And it was like a week later, I sold everything else. And I haven't, I haven't turned uh, back since. All right, so now that we got our covered up nice, 
our lead. So the only thing we're going to do different for this fly, um, oh, A-Rex. What, what are your intentions with A-Rex? Well, I don't know what you mean, my friend. Yeah, still using the point, uh, 035 lead wire. You could use lighter stuff. It depends on your situation. There's some pan, uh, ponds I fish for bass that are real shallow, three, five foot. And then I just tie unweighted and I just kind of, you know, subsurface those guys. So for the rainbow, the only thing I'm going to do different is dub over the wire instead of use the hydro hackle because I need it for the rainbow trout. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Like I said, you just want to cover the lead up. Technically, I guess you really wouldn't even have to cover the lead up if you didn't want to. And then come back over here with my rabbit, tie it down over the front. tight wraps in the front right. so now we have our body so for the head I'm gonna come in just with a little bit of magnum dub in light olive I'm gonna pull it yeah, one more trick, um, when you're working with the Magnum Dub, right, and it's too long for you, you can kind of just take it in your fingers and rip it. And when you rip it like that, and then you put it back together, it shortens it up a bit. And then you can work it from there. You can work your sizing down. So, right there. Biggest trout I've ever caught. Must add in all the other brands. What's your? F oh, okay. Um, well, I would tell you that A Rex is my favorite brand of hook, but because I tie for A Rex, I feel like that would be a biased question. But in all honesty, I tie for A Rex because I love their hooks, and the hooks are amazing. So, um, yeah, my favorite hooks are A Rex hooks. That's all I got is this giant box of A-Rex all day, every day, nymph streamers, everything. I love them. But I do tie on, uh, what is that, uh, what's that one company? Kona. I use Kona hooks for like some bait fish. They make some real nice stuff. Uh, Gamagatsu makes good stuff for saltwater flies. So I'm going to come in here. Bam, I got my light olive on the top. And then for the bottom, you can use a white but I like to use like a silver. I like to use like a silver. Oh, that's right. Well, the biggest trout I ever caught. So the biggest trout I ever caught was in Slovenia. I was standing on a rock and I was nymphing from this rock that I was standing on. It was a big rock. And I let the nymph just kind of drift by my feet. And it turned out that I was standing on a rock that a just monster trout was hanging out under. I don't know how big it was, but I would guess that it was at least 15, 16 pounds. You may think I'm exaggerating, but if you've been to Slovenia and you've seen the marbles and the rainbows in those pools, you'd know that it's possible. Uh, so anyway, I hook him, and the only thing I saw was this giant tail, like whoosh, and it looked like a salmon tail. So I was like, dang, that thing is huge. He was all crimson all down his body. And uh, I was just using a four weight. I had him on like, had to be like five or six X tippet. He was tiny. And uh, I tried to get him over to the net and my net was, I couldn't get him. I couldn't fit him in the net. And uh, you know, by that time I'm shaking and I'm all tripping out. I can't get him in the net. And finally, he had got enough. He had enough of it, and he just took off and snapped me off. 
So I don't know if that counts as catching him or not, but that's the biggest trout I've had a up close and personal with. I had one on the trucky too. My best friend sucked netting, screwed me. All right, so I've got my dubbing on the bottom and on the top. I've got my first stack, right? We're gonna do the head in two stacks, remember, two stacks. Uh, the hook I'm using is a one-aught hook. Um, you know, the thing about the sizing of the bait fish that you can make with rabbit tail and magnum dub, okay? You can go as small as you want, um, but then you're going to start transitioning from magnum rabbit tail just to normal rabbit strips, which are, you know, eighth of an inch instead of a quarter. And then, you know, you're going to use less dubbing. You could size them down, but for this, I'm using... Uh, you know, a, a larger hook. Cause I, I feel like if you're throwing a baby rainbow trout, you're probably fishing for a monster brown trout or a monster, you know, cannibalistic rainbow or something. So uh, whatever's chasing it, it's gonna be big, I would think. Right. So I've got my first stack top bottom. I'm gonna fold it back, come, it, come up between the division of them. Finish it off, bam. I'm going to do the same thing. A little bit of light olive for my second stack. A little bit of light olive on my second stack. All right. Right there on the top. My bottom stack, flip it up. Flip it around, upside down. I don't even have a trash can right now that's tossing everything on the ground. All right. So that's a little too much, a little too much. Remember, I want that bottom to be a little bit less than the top, less bulky. And the amount of rabbit tail you use and the size of the hook, you know, is going to play a part in the way your hook keels as well. Thanks, Sean. Yes, this is a uh, Trout Predator one knot from A-Rex, TP610. So just like the bluegill, now we're going to do the little cheeks, right? Rainbow's got pink cheeks, red cheeks. Probably some, you know, little cutthroat's got yellow on them, whatever. So I'm just going to come in just like I did with the blue, just a tiny little bit, right? Just to hue the cheeks with what you want. And it's kind of all up to you. Like if the rainbows in your stream are really pink and really red banded, then it might do you more good to add more color to it. But all right, So now we're going to come in with the pink and right in between the middle of these two is where I'm going to set it for the cheek. Pretty much right where your eye is going to be. Come in. Try not to make too many wraps on those because you want to make the other side. All right, so now that I've got my body, excuse me, my head, losing my head, losing my mind. Now that I've got my head shaped, um, I'm gonna come in here, tie it off in the front, whip finish it. And then just like I did before with the steel brush, I'm gonna come in and don't be shy to really get those fibers going shape it how you want it'll really bring the fly out the shape of the body that you want right and you know how this thing is going to look bam it's like barbershop four or whatever all right so now that our head's brushed out and we got the shape that we want and it's where we want it i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to come in with some living eyes all right these are eight millimeter 
have I been catching the native trout? Oh yes. So I fished the Truckee River for the most part. It's right outside, uh, you know, flows through my hometown. Um, pretty big fish in there. Truckee's a tough river to fish in general. It's a freestone stream in the Sierras. So I'm gonna come in here and just like I did before, I'm gonna put my vise in the 90 degree position and Who saw that? You saw that, didn't you? That's not going to work. All right. Bam. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put my eye on there. that eye stays on after I put the freaking UV resin on there. Idiot. Alright. And then same thing. Put that other eye right on there. And now I'm going to come from the side angle. Make sure it's at the position I want it. Parallel. Parallel to the, the direction of the hook. Bend point. Just hold it for a second. All right, it's gonna hold. My blender didn't ruin the day. Thank goodness. All right. So just like I said before, normally I would let it dry five, ten minutes. Um, if you're doing a set of them, hang them up and then come back and re-UV them all at the end. That's all I used to do. So come in here and just same as I did last time, pull the head back right between the eyes with some Loon UV resin. Come in with my bodkin and shape the head a little bit how I want it. You know, make sure that sail, right, the sail of the fish kind of is maintained. And you can maintain that stiffness and, uh, you know, sail look with the UV resin. There it is. And then come in with my light, hit it with the light. <laughs> Sean, I had a tumor removed from my finger, believe it or not. It was always weird looking, and then one day I was like, maybe I should get that checked out. So I went into the clinic, this was when I was in the military, and I was like, I think I broke my finger before. And they were like, uh, okay, let's take an x-ray of it. So I got an x-ray and they were like, nope, you never broke your finger before. And I was like, really? And they're like, yeah, there's something there. So they chopped my finger open and cut it out. All right, so it is weird, Sean. Very weird, thank you. Now that we got our little rainbow sh bait fish shape, we're gonna come in, cure the bottom. Do you prefer to stick on eye over the cone option that slides over the eyelet? Um, I don't like those at all. Um, that's just my personal preference. I think it takes away the realisticness of it when it's all squunched and then the back of it's all puffy. I don't know, just me. Um, you're talking about like the soft heads or the cone heads. I don't know you're talking about like the bait fish heads. All right, now that we've got our real rainbow bait fish, right? Came into shape, came into color. I'm gonna do the same thing. I did with the bluegill, except with the rainbow, I'm just gonna dot him. And what I do is I just take it with my fingers. Let me show you this way. Take it with my fingers and I pull these fibers back and then I just make my dots. 
as I go along, I'm just kind of give them those rainbow spots. Just freestyle it, you know? It doesn't have to be perfect. Can't name another rainbow that looks just like the next one. They're all unique, so. Just like that. Okay, now we did that side. Boop. I'm gonna flip it around, do this side. Generally, I try to keep the dots at the pink cheek uh, dubbing and above. You can go dots onto the white belly, but just me, I guess, I just don't do it. This is also a lot easier if you put it down like on the ground or on the table and do this. Brush it too early. And there you have it, baby rainbow trout. Bam, I like that one. So there you go. So just to recap, we did a, a baby rainbow trout and a, and a little bluegill. Um, I hope the video was helpful for you guys. Uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty basic tie, just some rabbit, the hook, and some magnum dub. And you can literally create any type of bait fish that you want. Um, with a little bit of barbershop skills and some patience, you can create a whole, kind of, a whole lineup of fish. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was good. It was a good time. Next week should be braiding up again, I think. Uh, don't forget to share this video, share it with your friends, and uh, barring any other questions, um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks. Uh, I'm just a normal dude in my kitchen, time flies and fishing and living life. So I appreciate everyone tuning in and uh, showing me some love, and I appreciate it. You guys have a good night.